literacy, the ability to read and write. One in five adults cannot read this title. Enrique Ramirez was one of them. I knew I couldn't read, I knew I couldn't write, and I was struggling day in and day out. As a child, I struggled. As an adult, I struggled. When I got married, I never told my wife. An adult faces a lot of barriers because they can't read and can't write. And especially the ones at home that tend to hurt the most because this is a barrier that you're putting up in front of your loved ones. When your child wants you to read, you can't read. When your wife says, hey, can you make dinner? Just follow the instructions on the box and you can't do that. Those kind of things really tear you apart. And that's why you'll find a lot of adult learners, they would stay within their comfort zone. They won't go beyond that. And that is a huge barrier because beyond that barrier, there's a whole new world. Barrier, a structure such as a fence that separates or holds apart. When I was in grade school, I think I was doing okay till about the third or fourth grade. I don't, I don't really remember exactly what happened, but I knew that I hated school. And um, by the time I got into sixth grade, I was completely stressed out. And I would, I would get literally sick so I could stay home. And so that's when it all really began, I think. People are labeled stupid when they can't spell or if they miss, if they're, the teacher calls on you and you mispronounce a word or you read it wrong, they, you know, the other, your classmates will laugh. And it's embarrassing, it's really, really embarrassing. At that time, nobody knew I had a learning disability. They knew that I, I couldn't, I was a slow reader. But my parents just treated me like the rest of my brothers and sisters and said, you know, why aren't you doing this? Why can't, you know, just come on, try harder. You, you know, you're lazy, you're, you know, come on. It was so hard and so painful. I, I couldn't hardly deal with it at all. When I worked in a nursing home, you didn't have to like write words. There was just initials. I could do initials, but I wouldn't have to write the whole word. So that way people didn't know that I couldn't spell a word. I, I really didn't like it. It was a hard work and low pay, and so I thought, well, I'd like to work for the school district. So maybe I could go to the literacy program and maybe they could help me because I knew that there was a test I would have to pass. It took us at least, uh, at least a year to get me prepared to take the test, which is now at an eighth grade level. And so I failed it uh, three times, and then I was able to pass it with all the help from my tutor, who was wonderful. It's terrifying when you have to read out loud for the first time. Ken ran as fast as he could, stopping only to pick up clues to lead him to the bear. I mean, I was never officially diagnosed with a learning disability until last year. I said, Dad, look, I have a learning disability. This is real. He had to chew on it and think about it. And then one day he just said, you know what? Will you forgive me? And that was so healing. It was so healing that he would say he was sorry. It's very common for adult learners to have the fears and the ghost of their past coming to nag at them all the time and tell them they can't, they're not able to, they're stupid. To learn to turn those off, it's very difficult. When I got my first day at Diablo Valley College, I finally felt successful. That was the very first time in my life I felt like I quieted that ghost telling me I couldn't do it. I feel like I can do something else. You know, I'm not stuck. I can go on, I can learn new things. It's a freedom, and it really builds your confidence. Confidence, belief in one's own abilities. I remember the night that I would have graduated, they had the stadium lights on, and so it, it kind of lit up the area. And, and just at the time, I knew that they were crossing the stage to get their degree. A sinking feeling came over me that you know, my life was going to be difficult. I mean, there's been successes. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a very conscious worker, and I'll get the job done. And so that always provided opportunities. But it was the other parts of life 
that slowly just kind of ate at me. It was, you know, eating at the core of who I was, my self-esteem. Your life becomes almost like a minefield, not being able to rewrite in a, in a literate world. Each day you walk out of your door, you know, there's a challenge out there waiting for you. There's that possibility of being discovered as an on-reader. And I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I, I knew that I had to change. I remember calling down to the library and making an appointment. And the only thing I really wanted them to help me with was spelling. I felt like if they could teach me to spell a few more words, that I could be successful. That day they did an assessment to find out where my reading and writing and spelling and grammar and all that was. And at the end they said it's somewhere between the third and fourth grade level. And here I was, a man sitting there, 43, 44 years old, being told that you were reading the same level as a very little child. My first tutor was Lindy. She was the first one that ever said to me, I believe you can do it. You have to think I had like 45 years of, of things that were, that were very negative that, that had became a part of my life. I mean, you know, the fear of being discovered, the fear of trying, the fear of being wrong, the fear of being ridiculed. All of these things just didn't go away because I was starting to learn. So for that first year, I was still working with my demons. And today, I'm sitting here with a bachelor's degree. If I could have done it alone, I would have done it a long time ago. It took you in my life. For that, I will always be indebted and grateful to you. For nine years, I have worked tirelessly in the community to promote literacy and, and have been effective where I see parents now that are doing things with their kids. I see mothers back together with their kids that have jobs and have homes and things like that. That's her legacy. She was the word that taught me altruism. She said, you'll understand that word one day. And today I truly do. Altruism, unselfish concern for the well-being of others. When I see the bomb come, and airplane, and helicopter, put the bomb and kill, then what I see. If I don't run away, I will die like everybody else. I try to escape. Where do I escape? I don't even understand what does that mean, escape? Where do I run? i born here, live here. Where do I am going? And the only thing I'm looking at, where do I protect the children? A lot of people, they're scared to tell them they don't know how to write and read and all that. And that's why people hide it. The company gives you opportunity to learn to make you a better employee. Don't feel bad. Just, just, just good to your teacher and learn for yourself. My teacher is very sincere. Sometimes I build the engine, it's very complicated. You have to read the blueprint. If you read wrong, you build wrong. But later on, I speak better English, I say, you're not a teacher. You're an engineer Why you teach me. That what he told me. I know I'm not a teacher, but I give something for people and take with them, and nobody can take away from you. You die, you take with you. I had a little trouble with a little R. Every time he point a little R, I look at him, I'm scared. I say, I don't want to say that word. He say, why? Because in Vietnam, my tongue don't go up and down, R, all like that. In three years, I couldn't say that little R. I cry every single time I see that little R. And one time my teacher so mad, he banged the table and I say little R. Nothing in this world you cannot do, Linda. You have to do it. You say that, that your buddy, say that word. Damn it, he, I, he's so mad, I'm scared enough, then I say it, now I love that little. <laughs> I owe too much for all of you here in literacy program, my teacher, my company. I don't know how I pay back, and that what, that my time, how do I pay back? Day and night, I open my mind, you look at my teacher picture, I say, oh my God, I better learn, hurry up. Come back and say thank to him, write him a letter. He can be proud of me. And uh, in my next adventure, I will write a book before I die. And it, beginning for me to be learning something for myself and that my time. Learning, the acquiring of knowledge or skills that will last a lifetime.